So, I found Matt. Um, this is obviously an exciting time for you. Yeah, this is great. We actually get to see the, the final product on the table. Yes, and you've heard stories. How many, I know Tom Sam as he finished it and didn't win. How many people have you heard from that played the game already? Uh, well, sample size is one right now, and that's Tom, <laughs> uh, because there's only a few review copies that went out. During our playtesting, uh, we have a lot more data back. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's the data? I'm very curious about the win-loss rate in this game. What's the data so far? Well, like I said, one a sample of one. <laughs> <laughs> what about the sample of the playtesters? Uh, the playtesters did pretty well. Yeah, so you can did rub it they? in with Tom. Uh, yeah. You guys heard that. The playtesters did well. I mean, your mileage well. may vary out there. <laughs> so, obviously this is different. The map isn't all there and you're kind of discovering the map as you go along. With not too many spoilers, but... No, I, I won't spoil anything. Yeah. It's uh, 71 years in the future and really bad things have happened in the world. Um, you're living out in havens uh, in the oceans because that's the only way to protect yourself from the plague that's uh, ravaging the mainland. And so, basically, you're, you're kind of isolated and you need to... Um, well, it turns out that the leadership of these havens has all, all come together and they had their annual summit um, and they never came back. And so you need to kind of figure out what's going to happen. Uh, you need to go out and find your leaders and find out what happened to the world. So at the beginning, there's very little you know about what's going on and you have to go out and recon the world and, and uh, kind of piece it together. Yeah, now you, um, obviously with that and with the um, with the black cubes at the beginning, you kind of changed the game, but you still, I'm assuming that the game has the same feel as a normal pandemic game in general. Yeah, we, we didn't want to uh, totally reinvent the game, so there, there'll be some, uh, some familiar beats to it, some familiar rhythms to it, but uh, there's only one horrible disease, the plague, uh, when you begin, uh, and you need to supply the mainland, so it's um, basically cubes are good. You, you have to keep delivering uh, supplies and uh, antivirals and so on to, to the people. And when those run out, then the plague appears. So basically you need to keep the world in check long enough for you to, to complete your objectives. Yeah, which is kind of cool. It's kind of a different twist because before you don't want cubes getting on the board and now you don't want cubes leaving the board. Yeah, uh, there's some inversions going on there. So cubes are, are good in many cases. Um, and there's other twists. Uh, the way the world uh, gets uh, disease is a little bit different because the, the infection deck is much more deadly. There's uh, multiple copies of the same city in there, so you can get hit. You know, Cairo can get hit three times in a row, for example. In a row, wow. And, and I hear, from what I heard, there's a lot of scratchers in this one, a lot of things that you have to scratch off. Uh, yeah, I can't comment on that. <laughs> well, well, you could comment at least yeah, on the, so your, your on the base cards. So at the very beginning of the game, you everyone uh, builds a character. So uh, you can't really see it. It's off camera over here. But there's a sheet where you uh, build um, your character. You get a, sti a sticker for your uh, portrait. Uh, you put in your name. You choose a job. And you're like every man. You're like... Um, uh, sanitation experts and teachers and radio operators and so on, all kind of stepping up to lead. And as you're playing, if you get exposed to the disease, if you start your turn with the plague, you have to scratch off one of these um, exposure markers. And that, that can lead to scars or even death. And you really know, don't know what's going to happen to your character as you're playing. Yeah, because these are kind of random, and which one you pick could be different, right? Yeah, you're kind of choosing your fate right, right out of the box. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. It's a, neat, it's a neat little twist. Have you guys thought about a season three yet? We've been working on three now. You have time. been. Yeah. Is it in good progress? Or is yeah, it we're still... making good progress. Oh, excellent, excellent. So, for those of you who didn't know, season three will be out, and there'll be even more cool stuff for this. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wish we could talk about more about the game, but since I haven't played it yet, I don't know everything. I don't know enough you're, you're, yet. Yeah, you're protected. There's no spoiler-free environment here. You haven't played. Exactly. But I do I do like the whole map concept. Um, one thing that I did here, and I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but every game's going to be different. I know in Season 1, there was kind of a storyline that went month to month, and this would happen here and this up here. And from what I understand, this one's a little more freeform. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything here. I don't think I really will. I, one thing that's different about season one is it's uh, you've got a little more autonomy. So we, uh, Rob and I played quite a bit with, uh, you know, if, if you had more freedom to interact with the world, what would that be like? And so your board is going to be a little bit more different than someone else's board, and you should feel a little bit more freedom as you're playing. Yeah, I think I think that's kind of cool because everyone's going to have really different stories. Yeah. People are going to find different things at, at different times, and it's going to lead to... Right. 
a lot more interesting discussion down the road. Yeah, at the same time, there is a really strong story pulling you through um, yeah. the experience. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. I'm, I'm hoping when I do play this that my group will be able to win. <laughs> what, what do you put the odds of, of my group winning? Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't watched you play uh, to that extent, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't want to... You saw me play season one! <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we we, we, we put, uh, won. You can open up the, the, the betting markets. And... <laughs> there you go. We're gonna have betting markets. So, uh, what what else are is, are you up to? Any other pandemic things? I know you know. There's, there's... always a little pandemic in the pipeline. Yeah. Um, so uh, in December uh, we're uh, releasing Rising Tide. So that's uh, Yuran Duan and me. Um, it's a game set in the industrial age in the Netherlands, where basically your job is to build um, dikes and so on to keep the Netherlands from flooding. So the seawater's are rising, there's lots of storms, and you have to do what the Dutch have done for centuries, which is keep the water out, keep people, keep people safe from that. So it's got some innovative me mechanisms where water can rush in and take over large regions of, if, if you're not careful and you don't have your fingers in the right place. No, it, it sounds like a really cool twist and a different a different concept like the way when with the Cthulhu one was a very different concept and even the yeah. Spain Iberia one so this is like a third offshoot different concept. Yeah this is actually part of the Pandemic Survival series so that series is set in different host countries each year. It follows the Pandemic Survival World Championship so we do a game for the host country. It's a limited edition game uh, it's got really nice components kind of like collectors type game and so like Iberia there'll be a limited run and so this is your chance to buy the, the one set in the Netherlands and we tie the theme uh, in with uh, the host country as well. So Iberia, you know, we have what was going on in the Iberian Peninsula in the 19th century, and here we've got uh, holding back the flood waters in uh, the Netherlands. No, it sounds great. I mean, for those of you who love Pandemic Z especially, there's going to be lots more stuff. I guess every year we're going to get something from a different country, so it's pretty exciting. Well, th thank you, Matt, for everything. It's my pleasure. And uh, I'll be back with more stuff from around the convention here and see what else is going on.